Welcome back to Seat Time. As Cody and I were trying to beat the Texas heat at Twin Hills the other day, we got to talking about hydration and electrolytes back at the truck during one of our breaks. And I realized that conversation was a better conversation to have here, out on the internet, to hopefully help other riders like myself, like Cody, and those that are either A, in a place like Texas that is extremely hot, or those that might be looking for a way to increase their hydration strategy. Yes, I said hydration strategy. There is a way to think about hydration that isn't just going and picking up a Gatorade as you're heading out to the trailhead and drinking it there or maybe eating a banana while your bike is warming up. Those are not bad things to do, but in the long run, they're kind of reactive to the fact that you're like, oh yeah, I need to think about this, where if we can plan ahead a little bit and make sure that we're thinking about our hydration for a ride day, maybe a day or two before, little things that we can do, that's what we're gonna talk about today. Maybe what you could do on the trail as well and then after that ride. So guys, hydration is important. Electrolytes are a big part of that. It's not just about water. Let's dig in. We've already said it. Hydration isn't just about drinking water. When we sweat, it's not just water that comes out of our pores. It's also minerals and electrolytes. Those being on the surface of our skin with the water are what help cool our core body temperature. So as we ride with more intensity or in warmer temperatures, we're going to sweat more. So with more sweat, that means there's gonna be more liquid loss as well as minerals and electrolytes. Those are what we need to make sure that we are replenishing. Now for our purposes and sweat rates, we're gonna kinda of average this out a little bit. In an hour of riding or a riding of activity for what we do in the intensity level, we're gonna lose about a liter of water in an hour. So about one to 1.5 liters. So you take that over a two hour trail ride and you've just lost somewhere between two and three liters of water. That's just in the water aspect. That's not the minerals and electrolytes that we're gonna talk about here in a second. If you're not drinking on the trail and you're only waiting to drink back at the truck, you're doing yourself a disservice. Now we're never gonna be able to replenish on a one to one ratio because our body and our stomach will not be able to handle that. But we need to think about it in that constant drip fashion. So now we don't know a little bit about our sweat rates, let's talk about how much electrolytes we're losing while we're sweating. Using a few averages, when it comes to sodium, we lose about a thousand milligrams of sodium per liter of water. So if we go back to that two to three hour ride, it's about 2,000 to 3,000 milligrams of sodium in that two hour ride. With potassium, we lose about 150 milligrams of potassium. So again, you take that to two, three hour ride in that 300 to 450 range with potassium. And then we lose about 20 milligrams of magnesium per liter of water. So in that 40 to 60 milligram category, if we average that out a little bit of magnesium that we are losing. Now we also do lose some chloride, but the thing is, is that chloride is kind of a hydration partner with a lot of these minerals. So in the long run, when you start taking them in, you're also going to be taking in some chloride. But we do lose a lot of chloride as well, somewhere between two to 4,000 milligrams, say on this two hour ride. Now, why do these electrolytes matter? Sodium actually helps us retain fluid and it helps with nerve function, which means the communication from your brain to your muscles, you need sodium to make sure that communication is happening. Potassium helps with muscle function and cellular fluid balance. So not only does potassium help water get in and out of a cell properly so our cells can function the way they need to function, they're actually helping with the muscles as well. So again, sodium is helping the communication to the muscle, potassium is helping the muscles do the work that they need to do. Magnesium is electrolyte balance and energy production. So in the long run, you can see that these electrolytes are doing a lot on the cellular level to make sure that the energy that we want to create is there to be done. We're not talking about the carbohydrate aspect of how we fuel our cells with ATP. That's a whole other side of this equation. This is just talking about how we need these minerals to make sure that our nerves, our muscles, and our body can do the functions that they're capable of doing, not do they have the energy to do it. 
I'm a big proponent of using whole foods to make sure that we're giving our body everything that it needs. Yes, we have supplements, but that's just what they are. When we cannot consume enough of the whole food, we supplement that with these supplements. I'll get off the soapbox now. What kinds of whole foods could we eat while we're back at the truck in between rides during that break to start to replenish some of these electrolytes? I like to use rice with a Himalayan sea salt. So I have salt on the rice. That way I'm getting in a simple carbohydrate and I'm getting in some sodium. As well, bananas and oranges. Lots of fruits are gonna give you different levels of potassium, but bananas and fruits are a great way to get your, some, your potassium up as well. With that, you're gonna get some carbohydrates. That's a win. Now, when it comes to the magnesium side of things, you can go to foods that are a little bit higher in fats, things that would be like nuts. So you get yourself some salted almonds, some salted cashews and eat those. You're gonna get some magnesium as well from those. So again, that's a great way, super simple to be back at the truck, having your conversation with your riding buddies or whatever that looks like, and you can start to take in some electrolytes there. But it's also very important to remember that's not the only time that we should be taking in electrolytes, water, hydration, and carbohydrates for our energy. That's where the hydration bladder comes in. This hydration bladder is one of the best ways to make sure that you're gonna get your hydration and electrolytes in while you are on the trail. It's very difficult to remember to drink while you're riding. So those times when you maybe hit an obstacle, you're waiting on riders, maybe you even crash and you pick the bike up, that's a great time to take a sip or two. Now this is a three liter bladder and the way that I approach this is when I fill this up completely with three liters, I actually put three elements in it. Now if you look at what an element has, it has a thousand milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. If you go back to those average numbers of sweat rate, that seems really familiar. There are a lot of people out there that say that that's too much magnesium and specifically the type that they use. I haven't had any issues with it, but that goes back to what we've said. Never try anything new on a race weekend. Always try it on a riding weekend with your buddies. Three liters, three of these, boop. I also put in my UCAN, and that is how I approach my hydration strategy. But it doesn't end there. I don't only do this, only drink on the trail. I do everything else that we talked about. I eat fruit and I make sure that I'm taking in electrolytes the day before the ride, the morning of the ride, while I'm on the ride, while I'm breaking in between, and then I have a recovery drink ready to go with protein, carbohydrates, and some more electrolytes to continue to replenish what I have lost from the activities that we do. Dirt biking is not easy. We're badasses for doing this stuff. We should treat our body like the god that it is, right? I've definitely said a lot, and I know that it starts to get nuanced, and this might be too in the weeds for some people, but I do believe that these are places we're not giving enough credit. We're not putting in enough effort so that we can enjoy our ride more, or if we're our racers, so that we can actually be focused on the race and not the cramps or the lack of energy and the bonking that comes along with not having a proper energy, you know, performance nutrition strategy or even hydration strategy, which are things that I like to talk about. If you are wanting to go a little bit more in depth on this and see some of this written out, I do have an article on the Seat Time website, easy to find, seattime.com. CO. It would also be great that if you enjoy this and you want to show the world that you are a seat time of the getters, grab yourself a shirt. You can go to shop.seattime.co. You can get one of the stoked shirts, one of the keep endurance in enduro shirts, or of course the single track mine shirt that are there on the site. I do have the utility can caddy as well. Great way for riders and racers to keep themselves organized AF either on the trail always ready to go with what you're trying to grab. Or of course, if you're at a race, you can keep things like oranges and bananas. You can keep things like rice. You can keep things like more water and more carbohydrates to refill your bladder at gas stops. You don't have to just duct tape bags to it anymore. If you have a strategy that works for you or a supplement that you like to use, leave it in the comments. Talk about why you use it and what it's done for you, what you've noticed. Again. These are tools, not rules. I use Element. That doesn't mean you have to use Element. I want you to know that this is a resource that you can try. If something else works and you are excited about it, share it. That's what this is for. We're all here to learn and enjoy getting sea time a little bit more. So. If I don't get to see you on the trail, obviously I will see you here on the internet. Enjoy getting sea time. And if nothing else, we'll see you for the next one. Peace. 
But yeah, I wonder what it would be like to just open this thing up and be like, Bleh! I mean, their tagline is salty AF, and that's when it's mixed with 16 ounces of water. So this directly in your mouth, I don't know, 100 bucks and I'll do it. Somebody uh, DM me 100 bucks in PayPal, and we'll do it. Drug it in seat time.